Hey everyone, it's Joe Nazeas from The Automator, and we were really, really excited to see some of the new options in Auto Hockey version 1.1.36.00. So this is still in version 1, but uh, they backported a couple things and added some really cool functionality to it. That's let's, uh, right. let's jump into it here. Yeah, so now we do have the requires command being a little bit more flexible than before, because before you could only specify the version that you were looking for. But now you can specify the bitness. Like, for example, if right now I try to run this code with a um, 32-bit version of Auto Hotkey, it will tell me, hey, the script requires that. And your current interpreter is this one. And it's located at this particular path. So it's, it's, it's really good at, at not only telling you what you have or where it's at, you know, but what the requirement is, which is great because now if I go ahead and switch to V1, uh, sorry, V64 bit as I'm requiring, um, then everything else is gonna work just fine. It, I will not get that message. So this is great news. Um, not only that, you can also restrict whether it's ANSI or Unicode, which right. <laughs> you definitely can go ahead and do that if you want, uh, but we really recommend you just using Unicode by default, unless you have very specific needs of using ANSI, which are not many. <laughs> I, I, I don't, I cannot think about one of them. Now, another interesting thing that happens with the requires command that kind of like I liked a lot was the fact that you can set a range, which means if your version is uh, more than or equals to point 12 right or is less than v1.1.35 here's the thing less than or equal to for example i'm now allowing a range of versions of auto hotkey it, it doesn't have to be a one it just has to match this particular range of variables that you can use um, and, and, and it is something that you could not do that before. You had to say like, just from this point on, well, I don't need to. Now I could just specify which range of versions I want to allow, right? But not only that, and this is one of the, one of the newest things, we also have the version compare function, which is something that we were missing because we had that in version two for a while, but now version one has it also. So what is that? Well, that is a function that allows you to compare two strings as a, a, well, two version strings, by the way. Well, I was going to say was I don't want people to get confused in the saying it's only for the auto hotkey version. No, no, it's not, not only right. that. This is no. where when you have a version of your scripts, you know, exactly. and, and you want to go check if there's an update out there, a really simple way to detect that, right? Like this will be really cool. Okay, so now here's the thing. Here, we can compare two version strings and the function would return three values, either minus one, zero, or plus one. Well, so what? A, it'll return one of three values. Of course, <laughs> yeah, so, so one of the three, of course. So uh, what is it doing? It's checking for this version, in relationship to the other one. So I usually pass the newest version here. So the newer version here and the older version there so that it tells me, okay, if they're the same, it's gonna be zero. Here we go. But if the newer version is higher than the other one, then it would return true, which is a one, right? Now, if the newer, the supposedly newer version is older than the other one. So let's say, for example, 0 0.1. So, or no, let's just do this. If it is older, then it would return negative one. So that's the way how you compare two strings. Now, why would we need this? And some people might say, well, this is, but I could do my own function. Well, I, I tried. <laughs> well, I was going to say was don't, don't get the feeling this is like, this is stupid. It's so easy. <laughs> 
is when we first started realizing that you have to compare within each decimal. You right. know, that's one of the things. Yeah, <laughs> then actually show the the string values as well, right? You right, to... because because here's the thing. So you you might think, okay, this is easy, but how about this string? So this is actually higher than that one. So you, now you have to take into account that this is separate from that one. So the components are checked but, individually. But throw a, an A and a B in there. But how is the, yeah, that's where it gets really tricky. 1.1A, for example, 1.1B. Now, which one is the newest one? Well, this one is the newest one. And that's what the um, function is going to tell you, that the one on the left is lower than the one on the right. That's what the min minus one means at this point. So it not only checks for that, it checks for the strings. So in very weird situations in which you have something like what, like this, and this is actually really the case of, for example, 2.0 beta is actually higher than 2.0 alpha. Okay, so this one is older. So this should return true because the newest version is actually higher than that one. So it should return one. So if, if, why don't you do the, just for fun, throw beta there. Yeah, and then put the RC on the All line. right. Okay, yeah. So now RC1, say, let's say this one here, <laughs> that one should be newer than that one. So... As you can tell, it tells me that this is the older version because it's minus one, okay? So, so it is doing stuff a little bit um, more complex than it seems. It is not as clear cut as just, oh yeah, just, just take numbers and you know check which is the number that is now. It might be a little bit more complex when you get into these kind of things. Or for example, yeah, how about that one, beta? Beta two. Which one is the which one is the newest one? So you have to know how you know the the function will tell you this is the older version. It will tell me minus one. Which, by the way, I'll put the URL up on the screen here. The semantic versioning is something that we we did a really good, interesting video on it. I didn't know all the meanings behind the different digits and numbers, but they do have a meaning. So right. it's a really good thing if you're not aware of it, it can help you out a lot. That is right. Now, the newest version of AutoHotKey not only has these new things, it has other, might be interesting for certain people. So yeah. again, just to add, what, what we'll be using this mostly for is we will we release our scripts and then you have it running on your computer when you launch it, we want to say, hey, is, is there a newer version out there? And it'll go to a web page and, you know, get the this number and then easily compare it on your computer to say, hey, there's a newer version available. Do you want to go get it? Right. Yeah, That's exactly. Most people be using this. Awesome. Yeah. So then there's something else about the company name. Out of the company yeah. name. So, so, yeah, that was because of a specific issue. Yeah. Um, sometimes you had this... Uh, you try to right click on a, on a script and you try to open with auto hotkey and um, auto hotkey would not show up in the list of programs that you could run uh, that script with. But it looks like it had something to do with the company name um, information. How in the world did they track that down? Yeah, you know what I mean? well, like... Again, yeah, that, that's, that's the type of things. How do you know that that's actually something that happens? Um, so here where it says, you know, I don't know if it is company name in here, product right. name, right. somewhere What's around the there, right, right. Yeah. somewhere around there uh, of the description values and stuff, seem to have set up this particular bug, which is amazing. I don't know how they got that, but yeah, whatever. Now, in any other case, we do have other little details that were kind of fixed i say fixed in quotation marks because it was not really a problem it was just um a way of comparing two strings when you were doing the switch case operation and if you had something that was a string even though there were numbers like this zero zero but it is actually a string it will not perform numeric comparison between them or were, for whatever reason, that was something that was changed. I do not know how that helps. Um, 
what is the difference between num numeric comparison? It, it has to do with when you have um, numbers like 10 and one, which one is the first one? Well, usually one is lower than 10, but when you're doing string comparison, actually 10 shows up higher than one. That is one of the issues when you are having lists. If you are trying to sort stuff correctly, um, you will find out about uh, string sorting and uh, numeric sorting. And what they're talking about is that the switch case is now doing a non-numeric comparison when you pass the strings. And that's something that, I'm again, I'm not really sure how that works uh, or what it fixed or why is it better. But yeah, that's different now. Just keep it in mind. Um, a few crashes and so on. But the one that actually drew my attention a little bit more was this one here. So it seemed to be that when you were using Fire Create Deer, if you had a backslash at the end, it was actually not creating the folder. And that was actually broken by uh, the latest version 35 that we have. So if you were having issues with file create here, just because of the trading backslash, then yeah, that has been fixed in this version. So those and are the, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and show real quickly um, the new install process, just because that let's, the setup thing is just a slightly different. So let's jump into that. All right, so this is just for the setup. So go ahead and explain the setup. Okay, so right now, when you download the new version and you have v2 installed, it gives you two different options. It tells you install as an additional version and the custom installation. Custom installation does what, um, what we are used to. When you click on that, it would uh, update those files here to be the new version, right? That's what we have been used to. But now with v2, we have this additional way of installing that it creates a folder for each version, right? So that's what is asking you for it. If you click install as an additional version, you will keep 35, the older version, and you will have a new folder with the .36 as well. So it, that's the idea. Do you want to replace whatever is there for V1, or do you want to have it in a separate folder so you can run different versions. In my case, I do not want to have another folder for V1. I always want, you know, just one for V1. Um, I decide how I could um, install it as usual. So everything else is the usual. The only difference now is that you have this additional button and you don't know. Uh, some people might not know what that means. It will create a new folder like that. That's what it is all about. And just go back to the, the install real quick on the... Um... A custom installation just that you know nobody in their right mind should be using ANSI these days um, <laughs> that's the 32, right I, I personally still use the 32-bit unicode just because there's certain libraries that are available but um i think now it's kind of getting closer of a not such a slam dunk decision what do you what do you think is this that is correct um now more and more like 64-bit versions are more common your operating system is already 64-bit so and that is almost well, pushing it, right? <laughs> however, that's what I say is like, that's where everyone watching this video, like, hey, you know what? Possibly you have a 32-bit version, right, of your OS. It might be. So you have to double check what version you have. But in general, what if you have a third, the, the safest choice is 32-bit because when you install 32-bit, it will run in 32-bit right. and 64 bits. When you install the 64 bit, it doesn't run in 32 bit. That's the reason why a lot of people try to use just 32 bit, but it is not recommended. It has a bunch of issues um, in the sense of uh, integer size, which might create issues that are not obvious to you. Like one of our issues was that it was at some point we were trying to get some timers and it was just giving us negative numbers. And we were like, how is that even possible? Well, because the integer was not big enough to hold the timer size that I was getting. That was all. So the problems might not be obvious. That's the reason why we recommend 64-bit. But there are some very specific situations in which you might want to do just that, right? Just use the 32-bit. In my case, that's exactly what I installed because my um, 
my toolkit uses a library that is 32-bit only. I do well, not have the 64-bit. Also, to clarify, because this confuses a lot of people, no matter what you pick, you're getting all the versions. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to get them all anyway. So, yeah, that's correct. That's a good thing to point out. So I have to reload stuff. That's okay. Yeah, all now, you're doing is setting, which is the default version. Right. Or you know, And that. you will see here on the left that now I have all the versions here. So I have the 32-bit, I have the 64-bit. I installed the UIA by mistake. I usually don't install those, but it doesn't matter. This one is just a copy of one of these guys. So if you need the 64-bit version, it's not that you cannot put it anymore. You can just delete this one here. You just delete it and rename, well, make a copy of that one. Yeah, you make a copy of it and rename it to autohotkey.exe and you're good to go. So you make a copy rename and that's it you just rename into that the other thing that that also confuses people is when hey well when you go to compile it you know, depending on the editor you're using and how you go about it it might select a different version than what you think right? yes and that's not the focus of this video but it is something to point out of like you know it's 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 a little more complicated than it, it appears but it's not crazy complicated that is correct okay so, so hopefully that helps you. This I think there's some really cool new features and functionality in this uh, version 36. Uh, well, 1.1.36. 1. 1. Yeah. Uh, you know, what do you guys think? What, which which of these things was your most interesting, you know, thing that was created and added? I I think that the ability to have uh, the the bitness, especially on that, requires one for me. That's huge. That's really going to be helpful. I think. Right. I, I was just going to say, does that allow? Will this be enough for pushing you to use the requires command now? Because actually, a lot of people is not really using them. Yeah, let's let's use them, and hopefully, this will be good enough for you to be very precise of what you actually do. So, it, theoretically, too, if everybody starts adding it into their post in the forum, it'll really help in the long run because yeah. version one or two or the bitness and oh, everything like it is really going to help. So um, please like the video if you learned something. It really helps us out. We get a lot more views. And that's a nice thing. My dogs are really into it, apparently. Um, and uh, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. We're the largest auto hockey channel. We release videos usually twice a week. This time we're going to release this one because it's timely. But yeah. So uh, we'll see you around. Thank you.